it's me, Renee, I'm back. And yeah, today, as you can see in the title, this is my anticipated reads for the rest of the year. So, books coming out in October, November, December. First, kind of, I was kind of thinking about doing this video for a few weeks now. And first of all, like, oh, are there that many more books that are coming out? But I anticipate, like, if it's just one or two books, then why make a video? You can just talk about it in a tag or something. But I kind of discovered that, yeah, actually, there are quite a lot of book actually, books, actually, that I kind of am excited for. But still, to come. So, yeah, here they are. And, as usual, it's not really in a specific order. It's not from my most anticipated to my least anticipated, or the other way around. It's not in uh, order of publication. No, because, I mean, I don't like being that predictable, organized, or what have you. Uh, so, yeah. First, we have Margaret Merch for the win, which is the sequel to... Moment. Margaret Merch takes it down. So the second book, uh, I don't know at this point in time if it's a duology, if it's I mean if it's the last book or if it's gonna just be a second book in the series. But anyway, the second book is going to be more political based. This had some political uh, hints here and there, but it wasn't like very political based. But the next one is gonna be Margaret is gonna be uh, internshipping with a political with a Democrat. So there's stuff happening around that. And yeah, sounds very good, very good. I love this one, so yeah, excited, so excited for the sequel. That one comes out in November. Uh, I know I just said, like, it isn't, like, the order isn't really any important to me, and it isn't, but I just kind of feel like, oh, as usual on your list videos, sometimes I know the date when it comes out, sometimes I don't, and if I know, I'll tell you if I don't. I mean, I'll link them all. I ha do know lately I haven't linked all the books that when I talked about it, but um, I'm pretty sure I'm going to try to do it now, in this video. And uh, yeah, anyway. And then we have The Bullet That Missed. It's coming up in October, so a few weeks. It's the third in the First Day Murder Club by Richard Osman. So yeah, it's the third in the series. As, as far as I know, it's supposed to be a... Uh, Quartet, so it's a third, but also don't go next to the last one. Quite sad, but also, I mean, all good things must come to end. And like having four books in a series, I would say like four books is kind of a good amount when you have books because you get a cool beginning and middle, and then you're gonna end. Of course, you get that in all series, but yeah, whatnot. And uh, yeah, I love the first two very much. Well, I uh, re really enjoy the first one, I love the second one, so. Yeah, excited if this third one is gonna top my feelings for the second one, if it's gonna be uh, as amazing, like not better. Because I'm not really sure how you can top the second one, because the second one was so good. But I mean, probably if anyone can, Richard Osman can. So, yeah. And then we have Sea Sparrow, which is the fourth, sorry, not fourth, fifth in the Graceling series. Because, okay, originally it was a draw. Uh, well, Originally it was a trilogy, three books, and then the fourth good book came out last year, and now this year a fifth book is coming out, Sea Sparrow, where I'm always forgetting the name of the character. But yeah, anyway, okay, so then uh, the the spy half sister of uh, I'm missing another name, the spy half sister of Bitter Blue, she's uh, traveling from. Uh, the country she was in, like they were in together at the end of the fourth book to uh, her home country, which, yeah, I mean, it's a cool world, but it's just so many names. But yeah, so this book is all about like her journey and she's traveling with a very important substance, so people might try to steal it. And uh, yeah, very excited. Yes, I didn't love the fourth book, but I didn't love Bitter Blue either. But I really love this universe, so yeah, very excited. And then we have Bloodmarked, which is a sequel, and the second. I'm not quite sure if this is like a duology, but anyway, okay. So it's a sequel to Legendborn by Teresa Dion. Uh, and yeah, this universe sets it's an urban fantasy, a uh, yeah, urban Mayan fantasy. It takes place in a world where you have descendants of 
uh, King Arthur, kind of fighting demons and evil and bad guys. And there's some institutional raci institutional ra racism in there, and uh, yeah, kind of it kind of goes into lots of different themes in it. Uh, and yeah, Legend of Legend of One, I really loved. Though I was gonna say I did a bad thing. I'm not sure if it's bad, but I listened to it in audiobook, and some parts was amazing. See, I mean, like I feel like, uh, and this is supposed to be YA. <laughs> like I, I kind of had to like. Put my I had to skip some parts and I had to like put my headgear away because I couldn't listen to some parts because they were so so scary. Uh, but I suppose I mean they were meant to be scary, but yeah, I don't like being scared. So for me it was kind of uh, a mixed uh, bag really because I mean you want something to be I mean if it's meant to be scary you want it to be done well. At the same time like if you don't like to be scared then do you want it to be done well? Like me if I'm watching a uh, horror movie that's done wrong, like, that's, like, that's not uh, done in a good way, then it's just funny, and that way I can watch it, but if I watch a horror movie that's, like, made good, yeah, you don't want to watch that, because that makes me scared, so, yeah. Uh, then in uh, November, Lauren Graham has another essay book coming out, uh, I have, like, my, have my idea, I think it's called something like, how, have you been waiting for this? You've been waiting for this? Oh, I'm not quite sure. Anyway, I love the first uh, essay book she has. And so, yeah, long game. She writes very good. So, excited to read this book. And I don't know why I cross my fingers. I mean, I'm not lying. Okay, as I was cross my fingers, this one will be as good as the first one. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, but yeah, that one comes out in November. And then we have Whiteout, which is the sequel. Uh, I'm not quite sure if it's the sequel, but it's like it's written by the same people who wrote Blackout. So it's um, an it's an anthology, it's short stories. Uh, and it's set during Christmas and it's set during a snowstorm, so there's a lot of snow everywhere. But like people have to go get places, so drama, drive, I mean how are you gonna get places when it's snowing out everywhere? And um yeah. A lot of people didn't like Blackout. Yeah, I mean commenting on that also but yeah but I really enjoyed it so white out seems like a yeah good thing to follow up with that book and read as well and then we have shipwrecked by Olivia Dade so this is the third in uh, this romance universe companionship series the first one being spoiler alert and I'm pretty sure this one actually takes like it's not just kind of fancy name, it's like they actually shipwrecked in the book. So that sounds cool. And yes, a romance, so yeah, excited for that. And then we have Night of the Raven. And it's actually like one of the uh, one of those titles that kind of goes on for forever. It's a long title. But the beginning is Night is Night of the Raven. And if I'm not mistaken, it's based on Indian histori historical time period. But it's like it's not like yeah, it's based on Indian historical history, but it's not I mean it's not a historical book, it's a fantasy book. So that sounds cool. And then we have Station Eternity. Yes, this one is by Mer Lafferty. So this has been described as Jessica Fletcher in space. Or you know, murder in space murder she wrote in space. So it's all about this. Uh, character, I think she's a private eye or police. Yeah, anyway, people keep dying around her, and she often, of course, she kind of has to solve the pro solve the crimes because I mean, it's kind of what you have to do morally. If you can solve crimes, you do it. But she gets tired; she wants she wants to break, so she goes on a spaceship uh, far, far away from everyone. And she, she's thinking, well, no one can die here. Of course, <laughs> people die there as well. So it's a murder mystery set in space, and it's by Mer Lafferty. I really like Mer Lafferty's. She has a duology. It's supposed to be a long book, long series, but ended up just being a duology. Um, Shambling Guide to New York. I really enjoy that series. So yeah, I gotta read some more by her. Also, maybe I have. I think maybe I have. Anyway, yeah, not quite sure. Yeah, and then we have a million to die, a million to one. Which is a YA. It's coming out in December. I don't know why I said that. 
no, not no, like that. Yeah, anyway, um, it's with like a big cast of characters. Well, well, uh, it's a heist set at Titanic. Now, I'm not quite sure if the characters are like modern day characters who are time traveling to the past, or if they're contemporaries of the Titanic, Titanic that just kind of need to get on the Titanic to to kind of steal something. Because I mean, like now, at least like. I kind of think of Titanic as like, oh yeah, that old ship that was sunk, uh, that sunk, that sank this in the first time it went uh, on its maiden voyage. But like uh, in the day, uh, like in its time, Titanic was like one of the biggest cruise ships where you had like lots of people, rich people, taking it. So like, like even if like even if Titanic hadn't sunk, I would think. It would kind of still probably be a big deal because, yeah, it's a, still it's a big ship, like it's a big deal in itself, really, not just how it ended up being, like the aftermath of it. But yeah, and yeah, a heist on Titanic sounds cool. So yeah, excited for that. And then we have the rewind, which, yeah, I'm so smart. I mean, I take notes, but I don't really take, um, I don't always take like. Um, elaborate notes. So the rewind. I think it is a romance. Maybe it's a woman's literature book. It is like I mean I wouldn't include it on the list if I didn't like it. So yeah, let's just stick with that. And uh, then we have twice a quinceanera, which is a, this one. I'm pretty sure it's like it's about someone who kind of gets a new chance at a quinceanera. The, the first time they did it didn't go well, and then now their sister's doing quinceanera, and then she's kind of living the quinceanera experience for her sister, I believe it is. Anyway, yeah, sounds cool. And then we have In the City of Time, which is a time travel story. And uh, according to Goodreads, it's the first in a series. So, yeah, very excited for that one. Uh, it's by Gwendolyn Clear. Who I already own a book by. Uh, haven't read it yet. Uh, yeah, I have a lot of unread books. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, excited for that one. I think that's coming out in October, if I'm not mistaken. I think so. So yeah. Uh, now we have A Wilderness of Stars, which I don't remember anything more about. It's a cool title. Like yeah, I haven't. I just wrote, written down titles. I haven't written down offers, which, I mean, in the moment you kind of feel like okay, write down the titles and like I'll remember the offers, and then now I'm like, uh, who's offer offering these books? I don't know. Um, yeah. Anyway, yeah. And then we have Legends and Latte, which uh is an on your India book. India book. It's an originally India pub published book. It's like a big TikTok, TikTok phenomenon, but it's coming out in October, mm, published by Four, and uh, it's all about like it's a, it's it's a novel. It's not a comic book. It's a novel, but it's set in a world of high fantasy. But it's like it's a low stake high fantasy world, so it's a world where you have elves and mages and all that stuff. But the main character has just retired and she wants to start a coffee shop, but the people around in the village just like. What's coffee? So yeah, it just sounds so chill and relaxing and kind of fun to like have a slice of life, but like how it not be urban fantasy, but having be, be high fantasy and it's a romance. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited for that one. I would say quite, quite excited for that one. And now we have Acting Depart, which is a new YA book. Uh, it's a romance, and I think pretty sure it's a retelling of Shakespeare, of telling it. Taming the screw, the taming the drew, or taming the screw. I think it is. So yeah. And then we have never ever getting back together, which is a second chance romance. So not a YA book. And uh, I mean, just kind of the title. I mean, it alludes to the Taylor Swift. I mean, I saw some kind of the Taylor Swift generation. Well, am I? Well, yeah. I've listened to a lot of songs. I'm not a huge fan, but I'm not a non-fan, uh, but yeah, excited for this one. And then there's an Anastasia uh, retelling coming. I'm not quite sure if it's a uh, first and series or not, but like, often retellings are standalones, but sometimes they're not. Like, there is an Anastasia retelling 
they ha already have that is a trilogy, so it doesn't have to be a standalone. But yeah, and anyway, I love Anastasia, so greetings. Yeah, give it to me. And then we have Watch Watch Which I Gonna Do, which is a uh, adult open fantasy with witches. Uh, so that's the, it's kind of been a trend with this last few years where we're getting more and more adult romances with witches like are in them. And yeah, I love me some witches, so yeah, excited. And then we have the Lost Witch, which again witches. I think this also is an adult. It might be a uh, YA. I think it's adult. Anyway. Oh, uh, that was that. I thought for some reason I had more. I did not. Uh, but yeah, two pages when I can't purchase it had two three titles. I would say that's nice and yeah. And uh, yeah, if you're excited for any of these, please tell me in the comments. If you have any books you think I would like that are coming out at the end of the year, please talk to me. And I'll see you soon. Bye.